It is possible to overcome fear when facing real physical danger. And there are some very compelling reasons to learn how. Having the right philosophical scaffolding can help, but in the end, it will always be up to you. Let's begin with a reality check. This planet is and has always been a dangerous place. That adrenaline you feel when standing on the edge of a cliff, or when you realize you almost just stepped on a poisonous snake, or when you finally come to terms with the fact that the government that you live under has become a militarized police state, that feeling is there for a reason. Fear is our physical body recoiling at the prospect of annihilation. Fear is a biochemical alarm system which helps keep organisms alive on this planet by triggering a fight, flight, or freeze response. If the attacker can be defeated, fight. If you can outrun it, run. If you can't beat it or outrun it, freeze and play dead. This alarm system has persisted in the gene pool and will continue to persist because in many life or death situations, it is highly effective. Fear, however, is a double-edged sword. Terror can send a herd of buffalo stampeding over a cliff, and it can make a crowd of humans behave in much the same way. If you need evidence of this, just take a cursory glance at the pages of history. Or better yet, take a closer look at current events. Fear doesn't make you smarter. In fact, studies have shown that terror literally shuts down the rational and logical parts of our brains. Now, it's obviously not a good idea to face dangerous situations or to make important decisions with the most useful parts of our brains turned off. But consider the implications of having an entire human society operating at this level. The trouble is, the ruling classes have always understood that it is in their interest to keep the peasants in a perpetual state of fear and insecurity. Those who are able to dictate the nightmares of a nation usually end up dictating everything else. The ability to control our fear and reduce or eliminate its hold on the mind is what allows us to take intelligent action in the face of danger. Having full use of one's brain also helps to distinguish between real and imagined threats. This skill is often referred to as courage. Courage doesn't just happen randomly. A man doesn't just get up one day and perform a triple twisting flip off of a cliff out of the blue. Chances are his heart was pounding like crazy the first time he stood at the edge of a high dive when he was a kid. The primary difference between an expert cliff diver and someone who passes their whole life paralyzed by their fear of heights is that one of them made themselves jump and kept doing so until it became second nature. You might gather from this example that the way to defeat one's fear is to face it. If you're afraid of snakes and you handle them long enough, the fear will subside. The same principle applies to most individual fears. The trouble is, fear is like a multi-headed hydra. Cut off one head and another can grow up to take its place. Furthermore, it is often not practical or even possible for us to overcome each little phobia and worry through direct exposure. For example, it would be foolish to attempt to confront one's fear of a dangerous disease like Ebola by contracting it. To overcome fear in a long-term, sustainable way, you have to go to the root. But what is the root of fear? The root of all fear, even seemingly petty and insignificant fear, is death. Social anxiety, for example, can be traced to the primal need to be well integrated into one's family and tribe. Being rejected by one's peers was a death sentence in ancient times, and still is today in many societies. This primitive legacy leaves most humans unable to resist the forces of social conformity and authority. Being unconscious of the root makes the irrational byproducts impossible to process. This underlying fear of death is the body of the hydra. Facing it effectively is the key to freedom. We all live under the shadow of annihilation, whether we consciously acknowledge it or not. You are going to die. I am going to die. In 300 years, every single one of us will be dust. No one leaves this place alive. And there is no getting around that reality, though some convince themselves otherwise. Do you find that thought disturbing? Does it fill you with dread and despair? Whatever you do, don't look away. Hidden within that discomfort is the secret of life. You see, death is the ultimate counselor. It is the ultimate point of reference. Will this thing that you are afraid of right now matter in 300 years? In most cases, you'll find that the answer is no. Regardless of how dire your situation may seem, no matter how serious your personal problems may be, death will erase them all for you someday. Once you fully integrate this reality, you'll find that it's a relief. Just a short internal glance at one's tombstone can be used to release those surface level fears. 
Take a deep breath, let it go, and do what needs to be done. We are dust in the wind. There is absolutely no sense in poisoning the precious little time that we have with inner turmoil. You're going to die no matter what, so you might as well look your death in the eye and smile like a kid who's been caught with their hand in a cookie jar and eat that cookie anyway. But what if the answer is yes? What if this issue that's keeping you up at night will matter in 300 years? What should we do then? Well, what would you do about it if you weren't afraid? What would you do if you knew you only had one year left to live? Answer that question and you have found your mission in life. You have found something bigger than yourself. Something worth dying for. But more importantly, something worth living for. Are you afraid of walking your path? Then take another look at your grave. Ironically, confronting your death can also help you avoid it. Those who have accepted the inevitable actually have a tactical advantage over those who are terrified of it. Courage is a wild card which can turn the tables against impossible odds. A small group of highly motivated, fearless individuals can accomplish far more than an army of cowardly and obedient sheep. Remember, we can negotiate the timetable to some infinitesimally small degree, but no matter what we do, our lifespans are short like sparks on their one fleeting trajectory of existence. You want to really live? You want to make that spark count? You want it to start a fire before it goes out? Then do not sleepwalk passively towards the gallows. Stand up, look your death in the eye, and dance. Dance like you're never going to dance again. Sing like you're never going to sing again. Stand up while your heart is still beating and hold your child in your arms like this moment is all that you have. Because it is.